Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimum cost to convert string. We're given five parameters in this problem, so I'm really just gonna focus on the example. The idea is that we're given two strings, one is source and one is target. And we want to convert every character from the source string into the corresponding character in the target string. Now these first pair of characters are the same, so we don't really need to do anything. But next we have B, we wanna convert it into C. And we wanna know what's the minimum cost to do that. And we wanna do that for every single pair of characters in both strings. Now, how do you calculate the cost? Well, that's what the next three parameters are for. So uh, I know the order is kind of jumbled, but at least they're kind of in the same spot here. So this is saying here that to change A into B, the cost is going to be two. This is saying to change B into C, the cost is going to be five, et cetera, et cetera. We just kind of keep going like that. So when we're asking here, what's the cost to change B into C? Well, in this case, it looks like there's only one direct way to change B into C, but it could have technically been possible that there is another way. Suppose that we could change B into, uh, let's say, A, and then suppose we can change A into C. Now, that's not possible, I don't think, in this example. It looks like there's only one character that can actually land on C, but imagine that there was something like this, and let's say that the cost to change B to A was 1, and A to C was also 1. Then, it's actually possible to change B to A with a total cost of 2, so we kind of have to consider that edge case and you might already know where I'm going here the information like the direct links here from one character to another that's not necessarily enough we have to consider the entire path does this start to seem like a graph problem to you because it is and obviously these edges have weights so what these three last parameters actually tell us is that for us to know what's the minimum cost to change one character into another, it's not a straightforward answer, but we can change these three parameters and build a connected, it might not necessarily be connected, but it's going to be a directed graph with some weights. If we have all that information, first we build the graph and then we kind of consider how we could solve the problem. Though if your mind is thinking in terms of what the shortest path could be, you're definitely on the right track. And given that the edges have weights, it's not going to be a simple breadth for search. It's going to be a Dijkstra's breadth for search. So aka Dijkstra's algorithm because it's pretty much a breadth for search with a priority queue. But let's first just build this graph. So I'm gonna start just going pair by pair. Let's say A goes to B, B goes to C, C can go back to B, C can also go to E, E can also go to B. So I might have not drawn this in the best order, but we're almost done. It looks like we have another character D, it can go into E. Okay, so the graph is gonna look something like this. I'll add the weights now. So the first one is gonna be two, this one is gonna be five, this one is also gonna be five. This one is gonna be one. E to B is gonna be two, and D to E is gonna be 20. So this is the graph. Now let's go through the source and target string. So the first two characters are already the same. So shortest path from A to itself will be zero. What about B to C? Well, from here, now what are we gonna do? Like what kind of traversal do you think we should run? Well, we wanna know, in this graph, what is the shortest path to C? And when we say shortest path, we're not counting the number of edges, we're counting the total weight of each edge, AKA the cost. So in this case, it's pretty simple, um, just B to C, that's gonna be five. Next, we get a C to B. So from here, back to B, that's also five. Or actually, is it? Let's see, actually, because I don't think that's gonna take us to the right answer, let's see. So C, we can either go here, like that's five, but like I said, Dijkstra's is like a breadth for search, except it's augmented. So from here, we're going to look at the two choices we have. We can go here or here. Of course, we're going to be greedy and pick the path with the least cost. So, okay, for now, we're going from C to E. This is where we're at so far. So the total cost to reach here was one. So now our choices are either take this path of five or take this path of two, but we also have to include the one that we've added so far. So this path total, it would cost three to get to B, which is obviously less than this path. So definitely we're gonna take that one. So actually the total cost from C to B, the minimum cost is gonna be three. So, so far, I think we have five plus three. And then the last question is D to E, 
And from here, it looks like there's only one way to reach there. There's only one outgoing edge from D, so there's not another possible path. So this is 20, add that in total. It looks like we get 28, and it does look like I did my math correctly. We got the right solution. So this is the whole idea behind the problem. Looks like it's gonna be a Dijkstra week. Um, in terms of the time complexity, I guess, the max possible size of the graph. So first of all, let me cover two edge cases. It might be possible that it's not possible to convert one character into another. What that would mean is there's no path from one character to another. So for example, if we wanted to say from D to A, I don't think there's a path from D to A because it doesn't look like any edge is incoming into A. In that case, if it's not possible to convert the source string into the target string, in that case, we're going to return negative one rather than returning the total cost. So that's one edge case. The other thing is, what's the time complexity of this? Well, to build the adjacency list, we're going to need extra memory and we're going to need to go through these parameters. So this is kind of like the number of edges of our graph, right? For every pair of these, we have an edge in our graph. So uh, whatever the size of these parameters is gonna be, let's call it um, M. Let's say N is the length of these. That's the graph size, pretty much. And traversing the graph is going to be the same, right? So now we're actually getting into something very interesting because there's multiple ways to implement the solution that I'm talking about. One of them is going to be much more efficient than the other. So this is very important. Please pay attention. Let's say M is the number of edges in the graph. And let's say N is the size of these strings. The way I talked about it a second ago, right? I said, okay, every time we go through like a pair of characters, we're going to run Dijkstra's to find the shortest path from that character to the next character. So in other words, the time complexity would be N, because that's how many pairs of characters we have, times M, which is what a Dijkstra's traversal is going to be on this graph, roughly, right? That's one possible way to implement the solution. Now, is there repeated work in that? Because think about the case where the length of these strings is actually massive. They tell us, though, that there's only going to be lowercase characters. So there's only going to be up to 26 distinct total characters. It kind of is strange to run Dijkstra's n times for the length of the input rather than running it 26 times. So consider this. Consider if we ran Dijkstra's algorithm for every single character in the source string. What it would do is Dijkstra's algorithm tells us what's the shortest path from A to A every other node in the graph. So suppose we had that, we'd probably store it in an array or a hash map. I'm probably going to use a hash map. But suppose we had that for A. And then suppose we do that for B, C, D, and E. What's the time complexity of doing that? Well, we're running Dijkstra's algorithm not n times, but in the worst case, 26 times, because we're going to do it for every distinct character in the source string. We don't want to run it multiple times for the same source character. It doesn't make sense to do that. We're going to do that and then have a hash map, like up to 26 hash maps, I guess. Once we have all of that stored, then it becomes pretty trivial for us to look in that hash map. Well, we'll have 26 of them, so we'll need to first to figure out which one we want to look at. So for A, we'll look at the hash map corresponding to lowercase a. And then in that hash map, we'll say, okay, what's the cost of going from A to B? And the hash map should be able to tell us that. So this way, we get the time complexity down to m times 26, but we still do have to traverse this. So let's put a plus n there. And this, of course, is going to pretty much reduce to m plus n. Now, the size of each hash map is technically going to be 26, like each character could be mapped to another for the shortest path between them. And we're going to have 26 hash maps uh, in the worst case for each character. So this is still technically a constant. It's kind of a big constant, but it's still technically a constant. But the space complexity is going to come from the graph itself, like the number of edges, which I guess still in the worst case, could it really be greater than 26 squared? I mean, I guess if we have duplicate edges, but I was more thinking along the lines of the space complexity is going to be big O of M because that's the number of edges we have. But at this point, I'm not even sure how to think about it. I guess it depends on the constraints of the problem. But anyways, let's code it up. So this was like the intuition I used uh, to solve the problem. I'm going to do a lot of like Python tricks in the solution. So I want to quickly mention that in case you don't understand anything I'm doing in the Python solution, that's literally why I created this course, because I always got questions all the time. So you'll literally see every single thing. I might do some like advanced heap stuff. You'll see that you can learn all about that in the heap section. We'll do a lot of dictionary stuff like default dict stuff, and you can learn about that here. So literally anything you could need about Python is covered in this 
this course. First, starting with building the adjacency list, I'm going to create a default dictionary exactly for that, where the default value is going to be a list, because there is going to be a bunch of directed edges in this. What we want to do is figure out the character from the original string, maps to this character, and the cost of that is going to be this. So we have to kind of go through three arrays that are of the same size simultaneously. We could do that with a pointer, but trust me, it's going to be a lot more concise doing it this way. And this is kind of a Python technique. So we're going to go through the source destination and the current cost of that pair. And we're going to zip all three of those arrays, original, changed, and cost. So the value from this is going to be that. The value from this is going to be that. And the value from here is going to be that. I also cover zip in the Python for coding interviews course, believe it or not. We're going to map source to the destination. Again, this is a directed edge. It only goes one way. But we're not just going to add the destination. We're going to add a pair. So the second value is going to be the cost associated with that edge. We could use two different hash maps if we wanted to. Maybe in other languages, it is easier to do that. One hash map might tell you the node, and then the other hash map might tell you the cost. But I prefer to do it this way because it's easier to do it in Python. So next, we're going to have that Dijkstra's algorithm, which I'm actually not going to fill in. I like to kind of see how we're going to use it. So remember, this Dijkstra's is all about returning the entire map. So from this source node to every other node that is reachable, we're going to have a hash map and it's going to store like the shortest path between all of them in terms of cost. So what are we going to do? Well, like I said, we want to run Dijkstra's algorithm for every single distinct character in the source string. Trust me, that's easier to do with something called dictionary comprehension. I'll show you, this is what it would look like without dictionary comprehension. Let's say for character in set of source, I'm calling set on it to get only the distinct characters from it. And then we would do something like this, running Dijkstra's on that, and that'll give us a hash map. And then we want to add that hash map into another hash map, mapping this character to like the map that it's being returned from. It will literally look easier when I show you how I do it with dictionary comprehension because it's pretty much the same exact logic, just written differently. So I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna create a dictionary. We're gonna go through every character in a source, every distinct character, and we're gonna map that character to the map that is returned by Dijkstra's algorithm. That's it, that's exactly what this is doing. And let's assign that to minimum cost maps. So every character is mapped to another map where that map will store the shortest paths. So now we can use that like this. I'm going to go through every pair of characters in the source and target string. I'll call it uh, for source destination in zip the source string and the target string. There's a couple things to consider. We want to obviously sum the total cost to go from the source to the destination, whatever the minimum cost happens to be. And then we want to return that. But don't forget about the edge case where it's not possible to reach the destination from the source. How would we know if that's the case though? Well, first of all, consider this minimum cost maps. Given the source, this is a hash map. This hash map stores the minimum costs to reach every other node. So I want to check, is destination a key in that hash map? If it's not, so if not that, then here I'm going to return negative one. That means it's not possible to reach the destination from the source. Otherwise, I'm going to say this, I'm going to get that and then I'm going to use the second key, the destination, because we know it exists in here. And so this should give us the cost to go from the source to the destination. And we just want to add that cost to the result. So we're pretty much almost done, believe it or not. If you know how to do Dijkstra's algorithm like me, you can probably get the rest of this done in like 60 seconds, maybe two minutes. Well, I guess I'll be explaining every line, so it might take me a bit longer. But with a heap, we are going to initialize it with the source node. But the first value we're going to put is the cost it takes to reach that source node. Since we're starting here, we consider that cost to be zero. So now I'm going to put that there. Now, what we want to do is build the hash map. I'm going to call it minimum cost map. I don't know if that's a good name for it or not, considering we have a very similar name here. That's the plural of that. But anyways, that's what we want want to return the minimum cost map. While our heap is non-empty, we're going to pop from it. We're going to do heap q heap pop from the heap. And we're going to get two values. We're going to get the cost, which goes first, and the node, which goes second, because that's the order that we added them. We added the cost first because we want that to be the key 
that tells us the priority of the values in this heap. Now we're gonna check if the node is already in the minimum cost map, then we can probably skip it because it's already been processed. Otherwise we'll add it. Now we'll say this is the first time that we were able to reach this node. So therefore, this was the shortest path to reach that node. So we'll say the cost to reach this node is the cost that was popped here. In addition, we're gonna go through all the neighbors of this node in the adjacency list. Um, so we can do that like this. But don't forget, it's easy to forget even for me, that in the adjacency list, we didn't just add one value, we added a pair of values. So here, we're gonna get the neighbor's cost and the neighbor. But actually I have the order backwards because we added the node and then we added the cost. So let me fix that like this. And now we have that. Next, we're going to just push it to the heap. So heap Q, heap push to the heap, a pair of values. The second value is gonna be the node itself. So we can say that's the neighbor, but the cost to reach this neighbor is gonna be accumulated. We want the total cost to reach this neighbor, not just one edge. So we're gonna take the current cost to reach this node and then add it to the current edge of that neighbor. So cost plus neighbor cost. And I think that is the entire code. I don't know what my computer was doing. It was kind of bugging. But this is, I believe, the entire code. I know we used a lot of like Python tricks and even just Python fundamentals with the heap. But again, I promise you, I cover all of this in the Python for Coding Interviews course. And you can see that it works and it's pretty efficient. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.